So as you may remember from last time, we're working in stage two of our incident. So stage one is the trigger. Stage two is the verbal part or the confrontation part. Stage three is where things get physical. And stage four is the aftermath. And last time working in stage two, we looked at some ideas for our general positioning depending on what, want, what we want the outcome to be, depending on the context of the situation, we might need to position ourselves to prevent movement, we might be channeling the person in another direction or leading them away, or of course, we might be disengaging completely. Now, I mentioned within that this idea of lining the person up, because if we're working at a certain distance, I need to be aware that things can go from stage two to stage three very quickly. In fact, I might want to initiate that myself. So, when I'm working with the person, in my general position, I have what we might call a smaller position that I'm using to line the person up. So that's what we're doing today, we're zooming in. And I wrote an article quite a few years back now called Fractal Systema that explains this principle. Because we can take a whole situation and we can zoom in. We can zoom in, we can zoom in, we can zoom in. And on each level, there's a, a, a different amount of detail, there's a different depth of detail, we can really work to fine tune things. Then of course we need to bring that detail back out into the wider picture again. It's no use obsessing over detail or just getting stuck on that one particular point. And of course within that detail we're applying all the same principles to the micro as we do to the macro. That's why we have this idea of it being fractal. It's all the same principles, we're just working on different scales of detail. And I think this is where we get some of the confusion, uh, real or otherwise, when people see Systema videos of, of Systema training. Because quite often we're working in this particular slice of time or this particular level of detail. We might be working at a very particular point in a situation such as we are today. And people generally, when they watch martial arts videos, they want some sort of entertainment involved. So they either want to see a, a comp competitive sparring or, or that kind of work, or they want to see a, a simulation of some sort of self-defense situation with a lot of drama and a lot of tension. And of course, the good guy always wins. Now, this method of training, this zooming in method is not unique to Sistema by any means. I mean, musicians do it all the time. High level athletes do it. Uh, an Olympic sprinter, their training doesn't consist solely of running 100 meters every day as fast as they can, right? They slice things down into all these little individual steps, how they get up from the blocks and everything else. So this is by no means unique to Sistema, uh, though I don't know that you see a lot of it in other martial arts. I'm, I'm sure there are people doing similar work. But anyway, that's what we're doing today. We're taking our general position and now we're going to start zooming in and looking a bit more at the posture within the position, if you like. Now, one thing we haven't mentioned yet, which maybe I should have mentioned last time, is the idea of range as well. I'll probably do something different on that. The, the, the problem is each of these subjects can be quite a big area. But of course, we need to be very aware of range from the perspective of us working and from the perspective of what the other person is doing to us. So let's just take that as read for the moment. And what we do, we're gonna start with the idea of the workspace. I'm betting that wherever you work, you have everything laid out in front of you. You might have your tools on your belt. You're sitting at the desk and you've got your mouse and your screen there. Or if you're driving a van, <laughs> the steering wheel's in front, right? You're not, you're not driving like this. So this is the same thing. If we have to work, or if we're going to that next stage of working, I want the person to be in my comfortable work space. So if we go back to our earlier idea of presenting a barrier to the person, then this makes it very easy to keep him in my workspace. The downside is, of course, I'm also in his workspace. Now there are ways we can work within this. As I said before, this idea about zooming in, zooming in, zooming in, but maybe we'll look at that later or, or next time. But for now, let's just take it as read. I want to keep the person in this workspace. If I'm moving around him at all, 
I still want to keep him in this workspace. Ed Phillips, I was talking to Ed Phillips about this the other day, and he calls it Polo and Pomo. Pomo is your position of maximum opportunity. What I'm trying to do is keep this person in my Pomo, and Polo is the position of least opportunity. So I'm trying to position myself also to be in his Polo. So the ideal situation, for example, if we're working sort of club or something like that, and I've got to escort this gentleman out to the door, if I'm working from this position, maximum opportunity for me, minimal opportunity for him. So I should be able to quite easily work with him. Within that arc, if we start bringing it down to this idea of lining up now, if we think about our center line, I, I tend to work off of the center line, which is common to a few different martial arts. Though, uh, with the Sistema approach, again, it will be a little bit different. If we both go like this, so we can think now, we've got that uh, workspace, but within that, we've got this, what we call a central point or an aiming zone. So again, if we're both here, then we're both in each other's sights, so to speak. So again, I might want to just angle. Now we can see here the angles start becoming smaller. I'm going from this arc. If I want to get out of this arc here, I've got to move to this position. If we're talking about more about this sort of central aiming point, then I've only got to come to here. And the center line for me is what I use to line the person up now. Because I know if I'm working from this position, and I've got my hands somewhere along this center line or close to it, then I can very easily reach out and hit any targets that I want to hit, just through aiming him up on this center line. So even though my arc might be moving around a little bit, I'm always really looking to position uh, maximum opportunity to me working off of this center line. It's a little bit like you see in some of the handgun work, where the body is used to aim the gun. It's not this, it's from here. So it's a little bit like a similar idea. From this position, I've got at least five targets. And of course, we get into preemptive striking here, which is something we'll look at in the future, how we position our hands within that. I'm not a big fan of this approach. Get back, calm down, as we said before. Uh, sometimes it might be useful. But generally speaking, I don't want to activate his nervous system. I should be able to get into range without triggering any major response from him. So the hands just raise up naturally. There's lots of different positions depending on the situation. The important thing is it looks natural and it doesn't bring tension into the other person. Because if I need to work, I want to work before him. Someone put a thing up recently that Sistema is passive. Well, I'm not sure where they get that idea because sometimes you, you have to uh, go first, you know. You're, not, you're being proactive rather than reactive. And in order to do that, I need to be in position. It's no good me launching my preemptive strike from here. It's no good me coming into here and then doing this. I've got to be able to move in close in such a way that doesn't trigger him uh, too much, but I'm already lining the person up. So within our previous ideas of the barrier, or the channel, or leading, I always have this concept of lining the person up. A, is he in my workspace? B, within that workspace, am I lining him up in my sights, so to speak? And then C, am I ready, if I need to, to go physical from there? And for today we'll just leave you with one last principle which is the shield and the sword because all of us get caught out at some point ideally through all the training drills we do particularly in Sistema a person shouldn't be able to enter into my workspace without me at least being aware of it or of it triggering my nervous system in some way but you know weird things can happen if the guy comes barreling in then maybe what I'll do here is I think shield and sword 
it might already even be making the move. This is kind of taking us into the physical part where we're really still in verbal, but of course these situations can change very quickly. The same as range, you know, kicking range to grappling range can be an instant. It's the same with this, something can be verbal, then bang, it, it goes physical very quickly. So push comes to shove, I get caught out, then I think one hand is protecting and the other hand is going to strike. That's the shield, that's the sword. Of course you can hit with a, a shield, you can block with a sword, but that starts getting, you know, too much detail already. Just keep to the basic principle, protect and, and hit. Uh, this can work in lots of different ways. I was in the supermarket a few weeks back and I walked around an aisle and the guy just happened to be walking the other way and it was literally like this. And I was quite pleased with myself because instantly my hands came up like this and I moved, actually moved into his space a little bit and he sort of backed off and we both apologised and off we went. It, it sounds like a trivial thing but these are the ways that you're, you, you, you know that your nervous system is working, you know, you know that the stuff is working properly. When something real happens, it's always difficult in training to set these things up because it's a construct. Right, and, and now you hit me, okay, you know, it, it, your, your nervous system is not getting the same kind of uh, experience. But when in real life you're walking along and someone's, oh, mm. that's when you know that the, the stuff is working. So, there's a few ideas for your position within the position. Uh, from here, of course, we can go on to some other things. We can look at preemptive striking and perhaps some other work as well. But that's it for now. If you do have any questions or comments, please let me know below. Please like, please subscribe, please share, and we'll see you next time.